More news in the case of Donald Trump and the document seized by the FBI after it came out that upward of 500 pages of private material was taken from Mr. Trump's home. Information was leaked to the Washington Post that material on a foreign government's military defenses and military and nuclear capabilities was found at Mar-a-Lago. The Washington Post saying, quote, some of the seized documents detail top secret U.S. operations so closely guarded that many senior national security officials are kept in the dark about them. So which documents were uh, Trump allowed to have? What, which, which ones could he have? Which ones were classified? Joining us now uh, to learn more about this, let's uh, speak with federal special master, uh, former federal special master David Cohen. Uh, David, thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, what does a special master do? Because let me explain what I think it, uh, that one does. It's like uh, one party, uh, in this case, Mr. Trump, has some documents and doesn't want the DOJ to get all of them. Unfortunately, they got all of them already. It seems like a late, kind of late to put in a special master. But now that everything's been taken back and looked at, what is the special master supposed to do in this case? Sure. So thank you for having me, Bob. Uh, let me correct you one thing. I am a current special master, not a former special I, master. I stand corrected. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I'm actually helping um, Judge Polster on the national opioid litigation at this moment and uh, serving a special master in that case. But so to answer your question, um, the way I put it really is that special master is a kind of fancy old term for judge's helper. And any time a judge needs help, Normally in a, in a complex case, they will sometimes appoint a special master. Sometimes the parties will ask the judge for appointment of a special master. Sometimes the judge will come to the parties and say, you know, this is a case that's very complicated. There is a lot of work here. I am only one person and uh, I would like to appoint a special master. And so <clears throat> the judge will then uh, ask the parties to suggest a helper. Now, one of the main things that a special master will do is to look at documents that one party says, um, even though, well, let's say it's Joe versus Jane, right? So even though Joe wants to see Jane's documents, Jane says, well, there are certain documents Joe shouldn't be allowed to have. Those are documents that are privileged. They are documents that, although I am required to produce them in discovery during the case, many documents, all of the documents that have to do with the contract that we're fighting about, for example, there are certain documents I'm not going to give over. And those are the documents, for example, where it's a, a letter from me to my attorney or my attorney to me, and those are covered by attorney-client privilege. And the other side's not allowed to get those. So what will often happen is that uh, there will be created a list called the privilege log. And on that log is all of the documents that I have that I'm not going to give over because I think they're attorney-client privilege. Now, of course, that's a recipe for hiding things. And so the side who isn't getting those documents might say, you know, I'd like to have those reviewed. I'd like to have that privilege log reviewed by the court to make sure that you're not just putting things on there that I really am allowed to get. And in, in the case where there are many documents, uh, for example, in the opioid litigation, there are literally tens and hundreds of millions of documents, and many of those are, are potentially privileged. The court will appoint a special master to review the documents. The special master will receive those documents in camera, meaning in private. The other side doesn't get them yet. And will review them and make sure that the claims of attorney-client privilege are valid. Okay. And that is part of what's happening in this case. Uh, the President Trump has said, some of these documents are attorney-client privilege. And the FBI has agreed. The FBI has said, yeah, you're right. About four or 500 of them. They are privileged, and we agree. We should not be able to use those. Can, can I ask you a little about the process? Uh, as a special master, do you have a team that looks through documents, or is it just your eyeballs that look at them? You know, it depends on the case. So in the opioid litigation, because there are so many parties and there are so many documents, I have hired folks to help me, and they've been working with me for four years. And what um, do you think about this situation? Because a lot of this is either classified or potentially related to national security. Yeah. You know, really good question, Bob. So who would be a potential special master in this case? Um, a lot of folks are saying it seems like it has to be somebody who has uh, security clearance, top, top secret security clearance. I think that's right. So I if you've got 10,000 documents um, yeah. and you have top national security clearance, 
and, and you have to do it by yourself. Or I'm even going to say, oh, you get three people who are qualified to help you. Yeah. Um, that sounds like it would take a very long time. And you can answer that question. And then could each party um, contest what your conclusion is on a particular document? Yeah, so, um, so one way of dealing with the fact that there are so many documents, and, and by the way, I was going to say, I think a person that that would have security clearance is a federal judge. So it seems to me that a retired federal judge might be a good choice for a special master. Right. That person could then perhaps hire folks who could look at some of the documents that aren't top secret and only the judge would look at the others, or maybe you get helpers who all have clearance. But in any event, what do you do about the fact that there are so many? Well, one of the things that a special master might do is to say, I need from you guys, from, from the parties, I need you to identify what we call a bellwether document. This is a document that is kind of indicative of how all of the other documents are going to get ruled on. So I would mm. ask to see a document between attorney X and client Y talking about this. And you're going to have me rule on this document. And the 40 documents that are like that, the ruling is going to be the same unless you can tell me there's a good reason it shouldn't be. Okay. And that's the way that you, you know, do triage through all of these documents. Um, now what happens after I rule, right? So, so I create what's called an r and &R, a report and recommendation, and I sign it, and it is my document that I send to the judge, and of course, both parties get a copy of it, and I say, here are the documents that I think are privileged, and here are the documents that I think are not privileged, and here are my reasons why, and the parties then have an opportunity to object. They, they can file an objection and ask the court to review it. It's essentially an appeal to the court. Very good. So despite the fact that um, you know I'm an attorney and I'm expert in this and I uh, submit my, my ruling, ultimately it's an opinion, right? That's why they call it an opinion. I, I give the judge my opinion, the judge then <laughs> issues okay. her opinion and uh, eventually the Supreme Court issues nine different opinions. Well, given what you know and the number of documents in this case, how long before we're through this process where the special master has come and gone, a judge has made her decision, and we move on to whatever comes after that. Yeah, so two things. First of all, it could be a rolling process, right? That's what I would think might uh, be a good way to go, that I'll spend a week and I'll come out with these rulings, and I'll spend a week and I'll come out with these rulings. So it's not, it's not the case that everything is stopped until I finish. Okay. Um, how long will the whole process take is really hard to um, predict. There's two reasons for that. One is there are so many documents. The other is that this isn't just an attorney-client privilege case. This is a case of executive privilege. This is a case where the president of the United States, former president, is saying some of these are unavailable because of executive privilege. Well, mm -hmm. attorney-client privilege comes up every day. Executive privilege seems to come up maybe once every 50 years so far. So right, right. there's going to have to be some research and reading and thought that goes into that. Having said all that, you know, there was a special master appointed to review Michael Cohen's documents, the uh, attorney for, for President Trump. I think, if I remember correctly, that her review of a lot of documents took about a month or two. So I would guess that that this wouldn't take too much longer. Interesting. I, I, you know, I could talk to you for an hour, but I can't talk to you for an hour. So, David, I thank could you. Too. <laughs> I appreciate you educating us on, on the process. Hope to have you back again uh, as, as we go forward, uh, because we all are learning about this, uh, and it takes a legal mind and somebody with your experience to tell us what we need to know. Thank you so much, Mr. Cohen. My pleasure. Thank you, Bob. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. September is historically the worst performing month for the stock market, so you better be ready for it. The Fed continues to aggressively raise rates, and J.P. Morgan is forecasting another mega rate hike September the 21st. Is that why Jamie Dimon said an economic hurricane is coming our way? Well, gold and silver have remained remarkably stable despite the Fed aggressively raising rates today. The Patriot Gold Group has a special incentive for Newsmax viewers. Huge! Now precious metals investors can enjoy the No Fee for Life Gold and Silver IRA on qualifying rollovers or enjoy free, discreet, insured shipping on all direct gold and silver purchases. Here's the number, 800-356-4470. Call 800-356-4470 today. <laughs>